the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you, and welcome to our weekly live stream broadcast of Rehoboth and Holy Trinity Ministries, Church of God in Christ. We're coming to you live today from our beautiful sanctuary of Rehoboth Ministries. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, on your jobs, wherever you may be watching and listening. We praise God for our pastor, Bishop William E. McMillan, Jr., and our First Lady, Hope McMillan. Amen. Today we will be led in our scripture by Elder Tobias McCain and our prayer by Bishop George Rogers. Say amen as they come. The word of the Lord according to Psalm 134. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. It is by the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassion faileth not. But they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Gracious God, our Father, again, we come to thank you. We thank you for this day, a brand new day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, have your way. Bless your people today, here and everywhere. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we give you the glory. Father, we pray now for the sick and shut in. We pray for those who are in the hospital. We know you today to be a healer, a deliverer. We know today, God, that you've come to set the captives free. So we thank you today for the wonderful gift of salvation. Save that man, woman, boy, a girl in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your anointing. For it's the anointing of God that destroys every yoke. God have your way. Bless us, Lord. Look on us in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We bless you now. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. Yes, Lord. Glory to your name. Oh, God, thank you now. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Touch here, touch there, touch everywhere. God, look on our nation in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way, they're here from heaven and I'll heal their land. God, we're asking today that we may hear from heaven and that you would heal our land. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for the messenger that shall bring your word on today. Anoint him in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. Can we give God some praise? In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. And amen. And glory to our God. Amen. At this time, join us with our praise team. Amen. As they take us further into worship. After our praise team, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, Bishop William E. McMillan, Jr. Give the Lord a hand praise. Our Father, all of heaven knows your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Place here up with 
praise can you hear it the sound of heaven touching earth oh the sound of heaven touching earth spirit break out break our walls down spirit break out in Christ Jesus thank you for your presence and we thank you for the outbreak the outpour of your spirit Lord your people have gathered to hear a word from you and so I pray God in spite of myself speak Lord through these lips of clay open the hearts the minds the ears of your listeners let them be receptive to your truth I'll take no glory to myself, but I will praise you. I will bless you, and I will magnify you as my eternal God. We ask these favors now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Come on, give God praise right there where you are. What a wonderful privilege. What a wonderful privilege that we have. Thank you to come into your homes today to your places wherever you are streaming uh, uh, we praise God for you listening to us live stream of Rehoboth Ministries Holy Trinity Ministries Church of God in Christ it's our joy 
to be in worship with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. I just believe that uh, there's something special about Sunday morning. And uh, the Lord has certainly blessed us and allowed us to come. And we thank God for you. Praise God for uh, Elder Wesley, who has done a wonderful job leading us in our worship experience today. We praise God for uh, our other dear son, Elder Pastor Tobias McCain. We praise God for him uh, being here with us. He shepherds the New Birth Church, and we praise God for him. We thank God for my dear brother and my dear friend, uh, Bishop George Rogers. Amen. Amen. We praise God for him of the Lovely Stone Ministries. It's a blessing for us to have him in this worship service with us. And praise God for all of you, the officials, the officers, and members of uh, both ministries. And we certainly praise God always for our First Lady. And uh, we thank God that the Lord has again allowed us to come <clears throat> into your houses of into your house from our house of worship. I want to call your attention very briefly to the word of the Lord uh, in the book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Yeah, just keep, keep it right there. Uh, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Uh, going to be reading the 10th, 11th, and 12th verse. Jeremiah 29, 10, 11, and 12. Very familiar passage of scripture and I believe God has something that he wants to say to us amen kings and kingdoms shall all pass away but there's something about that name Jesus, Jesus, there is something about that name, that name, that name, that name, Master. Savior Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim that kings and the kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name has left. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is something about that name, that name, that name, that name, Master. Savior Jesus, like the fragrance 
after the Jesus, I love to call him Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. There is something about that name there is something about that name I gotta do it yes Yes, yes, ooh, yes, 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 I love that name. Seventy years of being accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, causing you to return to this place. Verse number 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. 12th verse says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I want to preach from these verses of scriptures uh, just to inform you and to remind you that God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you you come on put that in your comments god has not forgotten you put some hearts to it and some thumbs up to it god has not forgotten you we are in some times wouldn't you agree that uh sometimes these uh times that come upon us make it seem like that maybe god has gone on a vacation or maybe God has uh, decided to take a break and 
we are not his priority. But I want you to know that when those kinds of thoughts come into our mind, it's a trick of the enemy. He knows that God loves us with an everlasting love, and he will not allow us to suffer or experience anything that he is not fully able to deliver us or rescue us from. 2020, this has been a, uh, so far it's been a year of blessings. It's been a year of many challenges, uh, shocks, and hopes. This, uh, we're just in, was this the sixth month of the year? And already we have experienced unprecedented type things that have happened in our individual lives, in our world, in our nation. Uh, and so this year has already uh, been something else. We'll reflect back on this year and we'll think of the good things that God has done in our life and also, we will have to reflect on those other things that have come uh, our way and our, and our surrounding to cause a uh, challenge to be in our life. Uh, in the late part of 2019, uh, nobody was taking the warning from uh, certain health professionals seriously that uh, in the most industrialized country in the world that any kind of that virus or sickness would ever take our country uh, by such storm and cripple us and uh, have us to be in quarantine and almost under martial law in 2019. Nobody believed that it could happen, especially in the mighty United States of America, uh, we are used to third world countries uh, not being able to control the plague or the disease. We're used to other people uh, not being able to deal with it. As a matter of fact, other people come here uh, to get operated on and come here to find out cures and remedies to their sickness. Uh, but this mighty country, the world power, uh, has more known cases of the virus than any other place in the world. And just when it seemed like we were, as they say, coming to a curve or to a leveling point, the latest number came out uh, yesterday afternoon, over 2 million people in the United States of America are infected with the uh, virus. Now that number is absolutely misleading because I believe that most people that have the virus don't even know that they have it. And because we have gotten into such a warped uh, 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 health care system that does not lend uh, equality, there are people that are poor and that are disenfranchised that have no way of even knowing that they have the virus. As a matter of fact, the symptoms of the virus is what they experience every day anyway. Right, 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 right. And uh, so, and then there's this uh, public surge of uh, videos uh, that are being uh, recorded of uh, brutality from uh, police officers and murder by sworn protectors. And it seems like uh, every time you hear of something bad happens, something even worse happens to top that bad. But I'm glad that uh, we serve God and our trust is in God. Our reliance is in God. Our dependency is in God. And God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I often say, uh, Pastor McCain, that uh, just because you trip don't mean God has lost his godness. He's as much God as he's always been, and he always will be God. Come on, put it in your comments. Even in this, God is still God. Yes, Truth is, God has done so much for us. He has uh, blessed so many of us. We have uh, blessings and receive 
blessings from the Lord that we had no idea that uh, were coming our way. Uh, some of us have had sickness, but God healed us. Some of us have had and experienced loss. We have experienced pain. We have experienced heartache. We have experienced disappointment and the like. But the one thing, one thing that all of those things have in common, and that's this, we made it through because God brought us didn't make it by yourself you didn't you weren't smart enough to do it on your own but 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 you made it because God brought you through I hear the psalmist I hear the psalmist saying that yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'll fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they Comfort me, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy. They're going to follow me all the days of my life, and I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, when we realize that God doesn't allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. But God promised that with every temptation, he would provide a way of escape. We sometimes penalize the world and base it our own self-pity when things happen to us in life. But you ought to tell you, come on, you ought to say, I don't have no sad story. Come on, I don't have no sad story. Even in the midst of bad things, God is good. Even in the midst of trials, God is good. And then sometimes we make declarations uh, when we're happy. Uh, we say that we want a deeper relationship with God. And God says to us, all right, you want a deeper relationship with me? He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And many times, many times, instead of us taking his yoke and learning, we take the yoke off and start feeling pitiful. But see, our lives, come on, put, put this in the comments. Come on, put, my life has to measure up to my testimony. See, our lives have to measure up to our testimony. Uh, the enemy is not uh, impressed, and God is not impressed by our deep sayings and our profound prayers and our social media quotes. Uh, God is not impressed by none of those things, and the enemy's not impressed by any of th those things. But what impresses God and what uh, 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 causes the enemy to be furious is to live right. And when you take a stand for God in the midst of whatever's going on, when you stand for God, it causes the enemy's feathers to be ruffled. And I don't know about you, but I want to keep him upset. I want to keep him mad at me. I I want to keep him. I want to keep him knowing that uh, he don't have no part of me. That God is in control of my life. I, I want I want the enemy and every imp, every demon in hell to know that God is in control and that my life is in God's hands. If you with me, come on, put my life is in God's hands. Hallelujah, and God. Is looking for you uh, that to be to be wrapped up in Him, even when we're tested and even when we're tried. God wants us to remain wrapped up in Him. Uh, back in the day, Bishop Rogers, they used to have a song that we used to sing in the church, and no, none of these musicians know it. But uh, the song you say, "I'm wrapped up." Tied up and tangled up. You know that song? And, and tangled up in him. And that's where God, he, he wants us to be. You see, God is looking for some, uh, Bishop Rogers, some Lamentations 3, uh, 21 through 24 saints. Uh, uh, Lamentation, Jeremiah says, uh, 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 this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies. That we are not consumed because his compassions fail not, but they're new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. Woo the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. 
Hallelujah. I know that God uh, has not forgotten us because he's given us the promise of his blessing. I know that God has not forgotten us because he said that he was going to bless us and prosper us. I know that God has not forgot, forgotten us because he still hears and answers our prayer. I believe that God is going to bless us. And not only is he going to bless us, but he's going to do the exceedingly, the abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. I just believe. I believe God's going to let me keep on preaching. Uh, he's going to let me keep on preaching without compromise. He's going to keep giving me a relevant word of peace and love. He's going he's gonna to let me keep preaching here, and I'm, and, and I'm not going to compromise with sin. I'm not even going to make a pallet for sinners. I'm going to love you, but I'm not going to make a pallet for you. Uh, because, because we've got to love people to life. And when we don't tell people the truth, we're not loving them to life. We're loving them to death. And so Jeremiah, I see, I need to get on with this. Jeremiah uh, is where our lesson comes from today. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet to the nations when he was yet in his mother's womb. He was sent to preach to a people that were in a mindset of rebellion. And, uh, but God called him to preach. And it's something how God will call you and not allow you to uh, choose your assignment. God will give you the assignment. So in chapter 1 of Jeremiah's book, uh, the Lord reminded Jeremiah and told him, Before I formed thee, I knew thee, and sanctified thee uh, to be a prophet to the nation. In other words, Jeremiah, I knew you before you knew yourself. I knew you before your mother knew you. And I knew what I was going to put in you because I needed you to carry out this assignment. That's why you don't have to worry about anybody taking your place because what God has for you, it is for you. Somebody might try to take it, but it won't fit them right. Uh, it'll be too big or too small. Uh, but what God has for you, it's handcrafted and handmade and designed exclusively for nobody else but you. And so in chapter number two, uh, Jeremiah is discouraged and he starts getting disgusted because the more he preached, it seemed like the worse the people got. But God told him to preach anyway. Isn't this something how God would tell the preacher to preach? Even when situations seem dark and gloomy, God will say, preach anyway. Yes, sir. Hear the law in the 32nd, uh, 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Well, he says to Ezekiel, he says, ah, uh, I'm going to take you to a place. And Ezekiel testifies, Wesley, and says that the hand of the Lord was upon me. Carried me in the spirit of the Lord and sat me down in the midst of a valley. And this valley was full of bones. He said, Lord, they were very many. Yes, sir. They were very dry. Yes, God said, I want you to prophesy to the bones. Yes, yes, says, what shall I say? And God said, say, oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel says, so I prophesy to the bones. There was a noise and a shaking in the valley. And the bones came together. You know how they came together. The uh, toe bone connected to the foot bone. 
foot bone to the ankle bone, the ankle bone to the leg bone, the leg bone to the knee bone, and the knee bone to the thigh bone, thigh bone to uh, the hip bone, and back bone, and shoulder bone, and neck bone, and arm bone, and elbow bone, and yeah, wrist bone, and hand bone, and head bone, and when Ezekiel looked at, uh, again, he saw standing there an exceeding great army. Now those bones did what the Lord told them to do. They were standing there uh, uh, with no life in them. And God said, uh, Son of man, can these bones live? Now, had Ezekiel said yes, God might have said no. Had he said no, God might have said yes. So he just responded by saying, Lord God, thou knowest. Mm, you've got to get to a place of maturity. where You can say, Lord, I don't have all the answers. Truth is, I really don't know what to do. But Lord God, thou knowest. And the Lord said, prophesy. And when he knew the bones, sinews came on the bones. There stood an exceeding great army, but there was still no life in them until God breathed on them. Then God let him know that just like I gave life to those dry bones, all you've got to do is what I told you to do. So preach the word. Preach the word in season. Preach the word. Preach the word out of season. And so Jeremiah got discouraged. But the Lord told him, keep on preaching. Keep on prophesying. And I hear Jeremiah saying in the second chapter that the people have done two wrongs. They have forsaken me, the fountain of life, and they have hewn out broken cisterns that won't even hold water. But God said, preach. So in the third chapter, God let uh, Jeremiah know, remind the people that I didn't let them select you. Remind the people that I didn't let them call you. Remind the people that no board runs the preacher, but remind the people that I give them pastors after my own heart and they'll feed the flock of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Ezekiel kept on, pre uh, Jeremiah kept on preaching, and the more he preached, the more the worse they got. And I hear Jeremiah in the ninth chapter when he got to a point where his heart was heavy and his spirit was wounded but Jeremiah said oh that my head were water my eyes were a fountain of tears then would I weep for the hurt of my people but I'm so glad that God wasn't calling for anybody to weep for the people but God was calling for somebody that would cry loud and spare not lift up their voice like a trumpet in Zion show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob yes Lord thank you Jesus and in the 18th chapter the word of the Lord said unto Jeremiah I need you to arise and go down to the potter's house then I'm going to show you a work on the wheel. When he got there, he saw the potter, took a lump of clay, put it on the wheel, and began to fasten that lump of clay into a vessel of honor. But something strange happened. The Bible said that the clay was marred. 
and of the powder. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah was confused because of God, you're the powder. And if man is the clay, how could something get messed up in God's hand? But I'm so glad that Jeremiah realized what nothing wrong with the powder, but the problem is in the clay. There's some stuff in the clay that's got to come out of the clay in order for God to make that vessel what he wants it to be. Come on and put it in your comments. There's some stuff in us that's got to come out of us if God's going to make us what he wants us to be. Thank you, Jesus. And God said to Jeremiah, can I do with my people Israel as the pot up does with the clay? And I'm saying, Lord, have your way. Thou art the pot up. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after your will. Lord, I'm in your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the 20th verse, in the 20th chapter, thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah decided I ain't gonna preach no more. I'm tired of these folk. Sunday after Sunday, they still won't do right. Prayer after prayer, they still won't do right. Sermon after sermon, they still won't do right. Jeremiah closed the scroll, said, I ain't gonna preach no more. Went somewhere on his own hyenas, sat down. But I'm so glad that the word of God was down on the inside. Preachers, have you ever been discouraged and felt like you was between quitting and giving up but something on the inside began to work on the outside and Jeremiah declared it's like fire fire shut up in my bones yes lord he kept on preaching and after a while as i get to the text after a while there was a lying prophet named hananiah hananiah began to prophesy he saw the children of israel how they were in bondage in babylon he saw that jeremiah had a yoke of wood on his neck and Hananiah started prophesying. He told the people in seven years God is going to completely deliver you from the bondage of Babylon in two years. He's going to take you out of this captivity. He told Jeremiah he said God is going to break that yoke off of your neck oh lion Hananiah broke the yoke off of Jeremiah's neck and told the people that God is going to deliver you but I'm so glad that when Jeremiah went to talk to God for himself thank you Jesus let me take a sidebar here that's why you got to be careful about everybody trying to speak in your life you know you're not living right you know what your shortcomings are you know what God requires of you don't let anybody lie to you and lie on God I saying to you what you want to hear but I'm glad that Jeremiah talked to God for himself Jeremiah asked God about Hananiah's prophecy but God said I said God said Hananiah is a lying prophet I'm not gonna bring you out of captivity I'm not 
gonna break the yoke off of your necks as a matter of fact I'm gonna move the yoke of wood and put a yoke of iron around your neck but I want you to tell the people that I have not forgotten them and I hear Jeremiah said in the 29th chapter in the 11th verse for I know he said what God said for I know the thoughts I think towards you said the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end in other words God has not forgotten you thank you Jesus if you're glad about it come on put it in your comments right there where you are lift up your hands and say God has not forgotten me God still has me on his mind God he sees God he knows me God, he preserved my going out, my coming in, my uprising, and my down sitting. God is my light, my salvation. So I fear God is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell because God. God has not forgotten me, but I hear God when he kept on talking to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, I have not forgotten about you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bless you and make you fruitful in the land of your affliction. I could deliver you but what I'm gonna do is leave you there right there where you're supposed to die I'm gonna bless you right there so tell the people plant your vineyards while you're in captivity grow your trees while you're in captivity have your babies while you're in captivity build your homes while you're in captivity I know, I know, I know, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. You're on my mind. Yes, you are. I've not forgotten about you. Yes, Lord. I got to quit now, but I'm glad. I said I'm glad that God will never leave or forsake us he said lo i'm with you always even until the end of the earth god i say god has not forgotten us and he walks with me he talks with me he tells me i'm his own and the joy Yeah, and the joy, the joy be shared as we tell me that none of them has ever known God, God has not forgotten about you. Come on, y'all, encourage somebody. Put it in the comments. Come on and tell them God has not forgotten you. God sees you. God knows you. God covers you. God sustains you. God will help you in the time of trouble. 
I know, I said I know, that it seems like it's taking a long time for this pandemic to blow over. I know that it seems like law enforcement is out of control, but God has given his people the weapon of prayer and wait. The weapon of prayer. P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E and the weapon of wait. W-A-I-T. Yeah. And while you're praying, you got to learn. Yes, Lord. What the Bible says. He gives power to the faint and to them they have no might he increases their strength even the youth shall faint and get weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as an eagle they shall run not get weary they shall walk and not think last one god has not forgotten you for your arms around yourself say i'm so glad so glad so glad that God has not forgotten me. You might have to cry, wipe your tears. God has not forgotten me. Come on and give him praise. Come on. Right there, give him praise. the folk that walk out of your life God don't you worry about the folk that lied to you God don't you worry about the folk that turn their back on you God God hey, God Don't you worry about the White House, God. Don't you worry about the police department, God. My God, I, I feel like dancing in here. Feel like dancing in here just just to think about the that that no Come on, right now. 
understand where you are. In your home. In your home. If you know God has not forgotten about you. Come on and give God the praise. said the only time I ever get forgetful is when you repent and I cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. That's the only time I get forgetful. The only time I get forgetful is when I don't want to remember what you used to do. That's the only time I get forgetful. But every other time I haven't forgot about you. Woo! My, 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 my. I can't. Woo!
in the early days of Rehoboth Ministries. We get to this part of the service. Glory of the Lord be falling like he, woo, like he is now. He came to get the mic. He had a little simple chant that he brought to the church. I don't know where it came from, but it sure sounds good. He simply say, Mine's on the way. 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 It's already done. 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 It's already now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Hallelujah. You know what that's telling me? I got mine. 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 Come on and give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. God, our Father, we do thank you for this privilege that you've given to us. To share to your dear people. We thank you, Lord, for the reassurance of knowing you've not forgotten us. Thank you for knowing the thoughts, oh God, that you have toward us, thoughts of, e of good and not of evil, to give us an expected end, to give us a future and a hope. We thank you, Lord, for being mindful of us. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, as we pray, we ask God that you will look on Every individual listening under the sound of my voice, you know what your children stand in need of. And Lord, you're not a God that if we ask you for bread, you'll give us a stone, but you know how to supply our every needs. Now bless your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask even while we pray that you'll look on that one that needs to know you and to be in a right relationship with you. Brother, sister, if you're there listening and you don't know the Lord, if you need to reaffirm your commitment with the Lord, this is the most important part of our worship experience to offer Christ to you. The Lord said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe him, your heart that God is raising from the dead that you shall be saved. Pray this prayer, dear Lord. I thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. I confess I 
repent. Lord, I believe that you are the risen Savior. I believe that you died and rose from the dead. And I believe to accept you puts me in your family. And so, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord, I thank you for coming into my heart and saving me. I want you to know, brother, sister, if you meant that prayer, if you said that prayer, you meant that prayer with all of your heart. Let me be the first to welcome you to the family, to the body of Christ. Now you join a Bible teaching, Bible believing church and grow in the Lord and he'll fill you with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer and thank you for blessing your children. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. God bless you, beloved. We thank you for joining in with us for this wonderful worship experience. Now we Come to the part where you have the privilege to sow seed, to give to the work of the Lord. I want you to know that when you sow into the life of Rehoboth Ministries and Holy Trinity Ministries, you're sowing into good ground. Won't you trust God? Where the Lord says to us, he says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. He says, prove me. It will say of the Lord, I will open the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out blessings that you won't have room to receive. He says, and I'll even rebuke the devourer for thy sake. Then the Lord says, give and it shall be given to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. He said, men will give into your bosom. And so we pray that God will look on the tithers today. Trust God with that 10%, the 10% that belongs to him. Yes, sir have several different ways of giving that will be displayed, that are being displayed on the screen. Go to our cash app, dollar sign, R-M-C-O-G-I-C. Go to our website, rmkojic.org. Give, and in the memo line of that uh, gift is designated to Holy Trinity. Please let us know. We'll be sure that the gift goes where it's supposed to go. And we thank you for giving. Dear Lord, we thank you for these precious saints that have trusted you and are trusting you with the tithe and the offering. We thank you, Lord, for allowing these seeds, these gifts to be sown into good ground. We pray your divine favor and blessings upon them. Honor your word. Do what your word said it would do. Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that there won't be room to receive and then rebuke the devourer. And then give back to your children 30, 60, and 100-fold blessings. We ask now in Jesus' name, thank God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that the doors of Rehoboth Church, the Holy Trinity Church, swing on welcome hinges. If you're interested in uniting with this body of baptized believers in Christ Jesus, please visit our website, rmkojic.org. Leave your information there, and someone from our ministry will be certain to reach out to you, as I will be delighted to have the privilege of being your shepherd. God bless you. We thank God for all of you. Look forward to uh, being in our prayer this evening, our 714, 2 Chronicles 714 prayer uh, this evening and then following our prayer this evening on uh, tomorrow morning, on Monday morning at 714 in the a.m. Uh, we'll be in our prayer again and then 714 p.m. on Monday, then 7.14 a.m. on Tuesday, 7.14 uh, p.m. on uh, Tuesday evening, and then we'll go right into our Bible study at 7.30. So we look forward to you joining in with us uh, as we journey through this time together. Isn't God wonderful to us? Hallelujah. He is so good, and we praise God for his faithfulness to all of us. Uh, the children of men. God bless you. Let us look to for our benediction. And dear Lord, we thank you for this time that you've been with you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We 
pray, God, that you allow your word to take root in the hearts and in the minds of your children and make us better saints because we've been with you. Now we pray, God, that you'll dismiss us from this live stream, but never from your presence. Bless us and keep us, O oh God, until we shall meet again. Keep us from all hurt, harm, or danger. We ask these favors now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.